Hello everyone and welcome to the 17th Hammer tutorial in the version 2 series. This tutorial will apply to all Source Engine games. I will be using Counter-Strike Global Offensive to complete this tutorial. Today we will be adding color correction to our level. Color correction automatically tints the colors or corrects them on the fly. The first thing that we need to do once we have our level that we want to color correct is go ahead and create the color correction lookup table. This is the file that the engine is going to use to correct the colors on the fly. To do this, you need to open Steam, go to your library, in the game that you want to use this in, right click on it, go to properties, and set launch options. In your launch options, you're going to put dash tools. Some games automatically have a tools launcher for you. You can invoke that by opening the authoring tools for that we see here Alien Swarm Authoring Tools has Alien Swarm Tools mode. The Left 4 Deads also have this feature as well, but Global Offensive does not. Some games may have color correction broken on them. In that case, my best suggestion is to create the color correction in Alien Swarm and then port the file over that we're going to create. If you experience any issues, just use Alien Swarm. It's the easiest way to do this. So once we have tools set in our launch options, we're going to load the game. Once the game loads, you may just be left with a black screen wondering what you can do. You need to make sure that Developer Console is enabled in the options, and then you can invoke the console by pressing the tilde key to the left of 1 on your keyboard. Once you have the console open, just type the map that you want to color correct. Once the game is in and you're ready to walk around in your level, enable SV Cheats, then type Color Correction UI. This will pop open the color correction UI window, which will allow you to color correct your map. Once you open it, you won't be able to move around, so I suggest you get into a good position for where your color correction is going to take place. And then open the color correction window. With the color correction window open, we see we have our lookup view up in the top left. This is what the game is actually going to reference when we are color correcting. To start your color correction process, click Enable, and you may see some colors change. When I enable and disable color correction, we see that my 2D skybox is actually changing slightly. That's completely normal, and you should expect it. Once color correction is enabled, click New at the bottom, and you'll get this untitled window. This will give you the option for what kind of operation you want to perform. You have five basic things. Curves, levels, selected hue saturation and vibrance, the lookup tool, and color balance tool. If you've ever used Photoshop or any other higher level photo editing software, you should know what most of these do. We're just going to create a basic color correction table for this level. So we're going to start by doing selected HSV tool. You can give it a name, but that's optional. Once that's selected, you'll get this little viewport of your level. You can actually select just certain colors to color correct, but I'll let you play with that more on your own. What we're going to do for this is we want to color correct the entire level. So under select nearby RGB, we're going to change this to select all. The entire picture will turn red, meaning that the entire field of colors basically is now selected for manipulation. We can now use our sliders down here to change how we want to color correct this scene. If I change the hue, we see that we're just changing the global hue for the entire level. And now also, do know that what you see is what you get for here. Now this is a pretty cool effect because I'm using the orange and gray dev textures, and I've essentially just changed all of my orange to blue, and it looks pretty good right out of the gate, but that's not quite the effect that I want for this level. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn down the saturation to about half. The value is essentially brightness for more or less, or contrast if you will. So I'm going to turn that down just a small amount. I'm going to close this out now and we're good with that. The next thing I'm going to do is click new and I'm going to add a color balance tool. I'm going to tint my entire scene blue to give it a more depressed feeling. Once I have those settings set, I'm just going to click New once again, and then do my Levels tool. I'm just going to manipulate these levels just a little bit more to kind of play around with it. I can't really teach you guys how to use these tools too much. That's just going to come from you knowing how to use them. Play around with them a lot, and you'll get what you're looking for. Just remember, what you see is what you get for this, although there is an anomaly with some older games. With some older games, you will have to perform a workaround if the color correction is too intense. I'm not going to go over that workaround in this video, but I will post instructions in the description below on how you can perform that workaround if you need it to happen. That workaround, I believe, is only in place for games older than Counter-Strike Source. So if you're editing a game from relatively the, this generation or the previous one, 
you will be fine. Once you're done with your color correction, we're going to click save as down here, or the save dot dot dot. It's going to ask us to save our file as a star dot vcc. This is essentially just a text file that has all of our color correction settings in it. I'm just going to name this tutorial 17. Once that's saved, we can actually go browse and look at that file. So if we go to our Steam Apps directory in common, every game stores it in a different location. You can always use the Windows wildcard search for star.vcc, and you should find the file after Windows looks for it. But Global Offense and some other newer games save them in Content, the Game Folder, Material SRC, Correction. And here we go, here are the VCC files. If we right-click on them and open them with Notepad, we can actually view what they have inside of them. So if you needed to port your color correction to a previous version that, say, didn't support a newer version, this is how you would do it. The last thing we need to do is verify that the raw file, or the actual image for the color correction, has been created. To do this, we're going to go back to Steam Apps in Common, browse to our game directory, CSGO, or whatever game you're editing for, Materials, and then Correction. In here, you should see a bunch of .raw files. These are the color correction files, and here is the one that we've just created tutorial17.pwl.raw and tutorial17.raw. We don't need the pwl file as that's used for Xbox and we're not editing for the peasant box. So we can just delete that file and this is the file that we're interested in. You can open this photo in Photoshop if you'd like to view what that looks like. You'll also need to do that if you perform the workaround. The last thing that we want to do is close out of our game and remove the tools parameter from the launch option. Now we just want to jump into our level and actually apply the color correction to our level. There's a few ways that you can apply color correction. You can apply them in a radius around the color correction entity so when the player walks in and out of them, it will gradually transition to one. You can have them be global across a map, or you can have them enable and disable. We'll go over doing all three of those. And of course, there are other ways, but these are the main three ones. I'll let you guys discover all the other fun ways to enable the color correction on your own. The entity that we're going to use is just called Color Correction. So press Shift E to select the entity tool, and then drop a new entity in your level. Double click that entity and change it to Color Correction, and we'll get our little color correction doohickey here. We're not going to set a name for this one, we're actually just going to set a lookup table file name. Now the lookup table file name is that file that's pointing to that raw file. So what we need to type in here is materials slash correction slash the file. So essentially the game directory is root here. The next thing we're going to set is our lookup fall off start distance and end distance. This is the transition period from when we go to full to nothing. So I'm going to place this color correction entity on my player spawn here. Now we're going to change the start distance to 200 and the end distance to 400. Now we have our two helper balls. If you don't see your helper balls, you can enable and disable them here with this icon up here. The inside one is where the effect is in full. The outside one is where the effect is no longer present. The distance between the two is the transition from nothing to full. We're now going to compile our level and we're going to see what it looks like in game. Now that we're in game, we see that we actually have that effect applied to us right away because we spawned inside that inside ball. That is where the effect is in full. So if I walk slowly outwards, we see the effects start to fade away. And then once I'm outside that spherical ball, it's completely gone. So this can be used to achieve a scary effect or you go inside a house or something. And it's super cool the way that this color correction works. Most maps now do actually have color correction through the entire level because it just it gives it that little extra detail that just sets it above the rest of the levels. Now we're going to apply a color correction entity to our entire level instead of in a region. To apply color correction globally to your entire level, select the entity and all we're going to do is change the global fall off distance in start and end to negative one. Once we do that, we'll compile, and we'll see what it looks like in-game. Now that we're in-game, no matter where we walk, the color correction is actually going to stay applied. With those values set to negative 1, they apply globally to the entire level no matter where you are. Now you are able to switch between one color correction and the other globally without an issue. We're going to go ahead and hop back into Hammer, and we're going to make that change now. 
So the first thing we need to do is actually grab a second color correction entity. I'm going to plop these both over here since they're global. I'm going to make a copy and I'm going to name them both. This is going to be called CC1 and this is going to be CC2. The other color correction effect that I'm going to use is the zombie intro effect. I'm going to paste that in and we're going to set the zombie intro one as disabled. Now I'm just going to create a trigger here. I'm going to create a trigger once to have these switch. I'm just going to create it in the doorway here. The outputs on this are going to be as follows. We're going to add, we're going to on start touch, target CC1, disable. We're going to add on start touch, CC2, enable. Now this will just do a harsh cutover. What we actually want is to modify the lookup table times, which is done in the fade in and fade out, or when they're enabled or disabled. The lookup fade in time is going to be three, the fade out's three, we're just going to set that for both of them. Apply, close, and let's see how it looks in game. Now that we're in game, we're just going to go ahead and walk over here, and this is where it should change the effect. And there we go, we've just switched to the zombie effect, which is this orange sort of crazy zombie eyes type deal. Once again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with version 2 tutorial series tutorials. Thanks for watching. Happy mapping.